Hey everyone, welcome back to Air's Vegan Kitchen. I'm here with Eric. Hi, I'm Eric. Boyfriend today. I'm usually really bad at getting seasonal content out, but I really wanted to do something fun for Valentine's Day. Boyfriend today. I feel like it's been, for much, now. <laughs> been much, much longer than that. So we're gonna be making some date night recipes. Sarah basically put a bunch of cookbooks in front of me and said, which, which one look good? What looks good to you? I brought out all of my fancy cookbooks. I was like, let's go gourmet. Let's just try something that we usually don't put forth the effort to make. I picked out a Caesar salad, yes. uh, some mushroom ravioli with some cream sauce, and originally I wanted lava cakes for dessert because it seems very decadent and romantic, um, but it's kind of a little bit, it was a little bit much. I woke up this morning fully intending to make lava cakes, but after, you'll see, I did a lot of prep. I've been cooking like all day for this video. By the end of it all, I was like, I just, I can't bake something too. So. Maybe we'll make lava cakes this weekend or something. But, but for now, chocolate covered strawberries. Yes, a classic. We're gonna start out with cocktails though. Mm -hmm. Before I get started, I wanna thank Misen for sponsoring today's video. They make super high quality chef's knives. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on, but you can click on the link in the description box and use my code SARAVEGAN to get 20% off site-wide with Misen and free shipping over $75. Nice. Should we make cocktails? Please. Okay, Eric is the drink master of our household, so what do you have for us You today? make it sound like I'm a master, but I'm just the drink master because I'm the one who does it. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so Sarah is going to have a Moscow Mule mm -hmm. with a little grapefruit, and I'm gonna have a gin and tonic with, I was looking up fancy gin and tonic recipes, and people kept saying, garnish with a rosemary. Yeah, I went to the liquor store this morning, and because I needed more gin, and I got this, Japanese gin, Roku gin. I asked the guy what I should get and he said this is good. It smells amazing. You do yours first. Very juicy. It really is. This smells really good. All right. We got your vodka. I'm gonna give you a little squeeze of lime. Ugh. Ginger beer, very accurate measurement. Sarah's like, do you have a recipe? And I'm like, yeah. Try okay. It. Give it a stir and a sip. Let me know what you think. <laughs> it's good. Is it? Mm hmm So I think I'm gonna put grapefruit in my gin and tonic too, and I'm just gonna go for it. Like the best smelling gin. Well, it's, you said it's infused with like sakura leaves and yuzu. Oh my gosh. You got it, it's fine. <laughs> wow, I haven't even had anything to drink yet. All right, we got some tonic. See, mine's easy, I know how to do mine. Say one. Looks good. It turned a little pink. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I need my sprig of rosemary. Oh yeah. Made it. <laughs> I wonder if you were supposed to like muddle that at the bottom or something. Mmm. We've got our cocktails and we're gonna start cooking. Our first course is gonna be a Caesar salad, but I wanted to go ahead and prep the ravioli. We made homemade pasta today. We... <laughs> We don't have a pasta, you know, the, the attachment that like rolls it out. I have this terrible habit of getting rid of things that I end up wanting later on. So I had a pasta machine and then when we moved, I donated it and that was a mistake. <laughs> don't do that. Um, we didn't know it was a mistake until just now. Same goes with, I had a Moscow Mule mug. Oh yeah, we did. Didn't and we? I got rid of it. I just yeeted a bunch of our barware when we moved yeah. that I like lovingly curated. We don't drink that much, so no. I get it. But when you want a Moscow Mule, you want it to look fancy. We've got our pasta here. I'll get into that in a second, but our filling is also like semi-prepared. So we're doing a mushroom ravioli. And for that, I chopped up, just coarsely chopped up two cartons, about one pound of cremini mushrooms. You can use like fancy mushrooms. I think like porcini and like shiitake would be mm -hmm. great, but yeah. I just wanted to keep it cheap. So we got a pound of just cremini mushrooms that I coarsely chopped. I diced up some shallots and then I diced up a lot of garlic, like tons of garlic. Shallots then, are so fancy. Right? Like they make everything, it's so much, it's like a fancy onion. I mean, you could use regular onions, but I did feel like the shallots would just, you know. They're romantic. A little bit. They are romantic. <laughs> So I took all those and then I sauteed those with a little bit, well, a lot of it actually, of vegan butter, just to shrink it down, cook off as much of the moisture as possible because you don't want soggy ravioli, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, then I also added in a vegan beef style bouillon cube just to make it super savory. So that's what we've got in this bowl here and it's cooling off because you want it to be cool when you stuff your pasta. And here I have 
uh, kind of like an almond ricotta. It's really just almonds. It's raw almonds that I soaked overnight in water. And then I peeled off all the skins just so that it wouldn't be like super gritty. And so it would be white. Um, and then I pureed it with a little bit of water in a food processor. So we have this like ricotta like texture. You could probably do this with tofu too, or you could like shell out $10 for the Kite Hill ricotta <laughs> if you're feeling fancy. So these are gonna be the main ingredients for the ravioli filling. And we're also gonna add a little bit of vegan parm and whatever else Eric wants to put in. Oh God. <laughs> Eric's like the, uh, you're the drink master and you're also the spice master of this relationship. Um, yeah. Hey guys, I'm pausing to say a few quick words about the sponsor of today's video. I'm super stoked. We are working with Misen today. They make amazing quality chef's knives like the one that I have here that I use to prep everything in this video. I've been absolutely loving it since I got it. It's really durable. It'll last you a lifetime but it's really affordable compared to other leading brands. It costs about half as much. Now, I'm someone who cooks every single day, quite often multiple times a day, and I cannot stress the importance of having a good quality knife enough. It's gonna make your prep work more efficient. It's gonna make it safer. Dull knives are really dangerous because they don't cut cleanly. They're prone to slipping. And if you are a new chef especially, getting your first good knife is gonna be such a game changer for you, I promise. So I've been cooking for about 15 years. I think my dad got me my first chef's knife when I was like 19, I was in college. I have owned and used a lot of different knives over the course of my life and I really like this one. Just the construction of the knife, it's nicely balanced, it feels good in my hand. It has a nice weight to it, but it's not cumbersome or super heavy. So I'm a big fan. They have a lot more information about the design and the materials used on their website if you wanna check that out. Read some reviews, they have like an average 4.8 star rating. The chef's knife world is kind of split into two primary camps. So there's Japanese steel, which is kind of known for being able to achieve a really razor sharp edge, but it's a bit more brittle. And then there's German steel, which is known for its toughness and its durability. So Misa knives are a hybrid of the two. You get the best of both worlds. They have really sharp edges, but they don't require a lot of maintenance to maintain that sharpness. The way they're able to keep their costs low is by working closely with their materials material suppliers and factories, and then they pass that savings on to you by selling at wholesale price online. They're tested extensively by professional chefs, but you can also check out the ratings. Their website's really easy to navigate. They do have a lifetime guarantee on their products, so if anything happens to it, you can contact them and they will replace it for you for the rest of your life. And then another thing that's really cool is they have a 60-day test period, so you can actually receive the knife, test it out, make sure you absolutely love it before you commit. And if you are interested in trying out Misen, investing in a nice knife for yourself or a loved one, you can click the link down below, use my code SARAVEGAN for 20% off site-wide, as well as free shipping off of orders, $75 or more. This is good. Good. You wanna try it? I know you don't like gin, but you, it might be pleasant. Yeah, I haven't liked gin since uh, Halloween of 20. 12? Yeah. You know. I feel like everyone has that experience. Mm -hmm. It is good though. It's Isn't it really like mild? Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna make like a paste to stuff our ravioli. Beautiful. I also, like, I need to warn you that I have made ravioli once in my life and okay. it was years ago and um, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I think it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna put like half of this. Okay. I'm gonna press the button. <laughs> Follow your heart, vegan parm. Really is the best parm, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, so let's add like half of it, I guess. Yeah. It ain't easy. Being cheesy? Being cheesy. Can you smell this? Ooh, that, the parm really brings it to life. Mmm, that's good. I don't even think it needs salt. Mm -mm. Is there salt in the parm and then there is salt in the bouillon. bouillon cube. Do you want to add any other spices? Pepper. Okay, so I want to chat a little bit about this homemade pasta. If you look up like homemade pasta dough, they call for eggs. Mm. So I wanted to try that just substituting in just egg. All I did was I took, I did equal parts semolina flour that I got from Bob's Red Mill mm. and just regular all-purpose flour, a little bit of salt, mm. And then I just followed like the top rated, it might've been like New York Times pasta dough. And I just substituted in an equivalent amount of just egg for the egg. 
and I used my food processor to knead everything together. It's a really stiff dough, so that just made it a bit easier. I see no reason why it wouldn't work. Should I blend this one more time to get the pepper in? Sure. Hey, I got one job so far and I want to do it as many times as possible. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Right, so I kneaded the dough in the food processor and then I divided it into four little discs and then I let it rest. You definitely need to let it rest so the gluten can relax so that you can roll it super duper thin. I was like really scared that we wouldn't be able to get it thin enough without the pasta roller, but we did. We got I, it. I, called, I summoned the big guns. <clears throat> So we have gone ahead and rolled out the pasta dough. We have four sheets, just separated by parchment. Okay. I'm like kind of anxious about trying this. Are you nervous? I am. I, know. I personally am not trying to impress <laughs> anyone's nona. I'm just gonna kind of score the dough so we know like where to put the filling. This is a moment of truth. All right. Oh my God. All right. How do you so seal them together? Now we're just gonna like tuck them in. Okay. This is amazing. <laughs> oh. We're gonna use this little scallopy cutter guy. Are you handing that to yeah. me? <laughs> can, you, can you handle the responsibility? Oh it's just like cutting a pizza. <laughs> So now what we're gonna do is just kind of crimp the edges so that they stick together. I like how every culture like has dumplings. Has a version of a filling in a doughy pocket. Yeah. Speaking of doughy pockets, I have been meaning for like years. To Make calzones? <laughs> calzones, yes, but hot pockets. Oh. I've been wanting to make like pizza hot. Well, I guess it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> They're more or less the same thing. But what about like a ham and cheese hot Ooh, pocket? That sounds good. I also really want to make toaster strudels and pop tarts. Also, I've done three and you've done six, yeah. which I mean. I'm quick with it. <laughs> and my girl's quick with it. <laughs> they don't call her uh Quick crimpin' Sarah for nothing. Quick crimpin' Sullivan. They're like, how many drinks have they had? <laughs> it's like Not literally 0.5. <laughs> Uh, we're at, at altitude. It's true. We've only lived here for four years. <laughs> They're so cute. Beautiful. Okay. We have a pot of water coming to a boil so we can boil our ravioli. And in the meantime, I'm going to put together our Caesar salad dressing. So <laughs> I'm gonna give you the fun task, which is that I prepped a bunch of romaine and I got a salad spinner like last month. And I mean, I feel like it's easy to write off as like one of those unnecessary kitchen gadgets, but mm -hmm. I use it all the time. It's so useful, especially if you like to prep like large amounts of greens ahead of time. I mean, I would just always have wet salad. Yeah. Like I would try to like use a, like a dish cloth. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Get, get a salad spinner. <laughs> I use it all the time. Spin your salad. So go ahead. Oh, already? Yeah. Oh, hold on. We rinsed our romaine. <clears throat> Look at all of, I don't know if you can see that, but there's so much extra water in there. It's so good. That's so we got our romaine, which is gonna be the base of our salad. And the main ingredient for our dressing is gonna be roasted garlic. I actually roasted like three or four heads of garlic earlier today. To roast it, all you need to do is chop off the top to expose some of the garlic cloves, as many of them as you can expose, and then drizzle them with olive oil. Then you can wrap the heads individually in foil if you're just doing one or two at a time. Uh, I just put them in a baking dish, covered it with foil, and I roasted it for about 50 minutes. It kind of depends on the size of your garlic cloves and how many you're doing, but you just want to keep an eye on them. And when they turn like a nice caramelized brown color, they are ready and you can squeeze them out of the skins. So this is two full heads of roasted garlic and it's gonna provide a lot of flavor for our dressing and it's gonna kind of provide a creamy base. So I'm gonna be using a 
an immersion blender and we're gonna combine it in a mason jar. You can do it in I'm a- covering. Yeah, you can do it in a blender if you like. I boiled one of our scraps of pasta if you would like to. Did you try it yet? Honey, it's delicious. Is it good? It tastes, Is the texture It tastes like pasta. Oh my god. It's perfect. I don't know why I'm surprised. It's like, Me neither. <laughs> it should be like pasta. It tastes exactly like pasta. Mm. What can I do? Buzz off. I'm kind of just winging this here. I feel like I've made enough vegan variations of Caesar for this to come out all right. I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon mustard for the flavor and to act as an emulsifier here. We're gonna add in some capers with a little bit of the brine just to substitute in that fishy feeling. Oh my God, I don't think I've opened this before. Traditional Caesar salad contains anchovies and we're gonna be using a combination of capers and vegan Worcestershire sauce to kind of achieve that like, oceanic savory flavor. So we're gonna add a little bit of the capers with some of the brine, maybe like a teaspoon, not too much. I'm not a huge fan of capers on their own. And then a little splash of vegan Worcestershire sauce. I'm also going to be adding some nutritional yeast. You could use some vegan parm if you like, um, but this is gonna add the cheesy flavor and a little bit more savory. Some black pepper, a couple teaspoons of lemon juice. And then we have olive oil here. <laughs> you toss the salad. Some parm. I don't remember where I saw this, but somebody once recommended to crush your croutons and then it like kind of forms like, I don't know, it just like really coats every little bite of salad. Oh, interesting. And I've been doing that. How did I not know you do this? I don't even realize you do Press it. Them? Yeah, because I do, I do like, I can envision. Boys. I feel like I'm doing the task you should okay, be okay. doing. Okay, but just be careful. Just please. like not too much. Just be careful. Not too much. Our upstairs neighbors are like, what's happening? Our upstairs neighbors are fine, trust me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they make enough noise of their own. So we're gonna have like a bunch of different textures of crouton in here. Just, just do this, add the croutons in the last minute because they will get soggy if you're making like a big batch and you're gonna have leftovers. My preferred ratio of crouton to lettuce is two parts crouton to one part lettuce, yeah, but yeah. We'll, we'll restrain ourselves. And then like also one part Parmesan. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for just a few minutes. We're in the home stretch for dinner. <laughs> we have boiled our ravioli. It took about four, four and a half-ish minutes. We tried one, it's really good, plain. Mm -hmm. And we reserved some of the starchy water for our sauce. I'm putting Eric in charge of the sauce. We're just doing something super simple. I'm gonna dice up some more shallots and garlic. Um, I'm gonna make this little sauce. We started putting butter in, our, in a jar here to keep it next to the stove. So we have some vegan butter in our jar. I'm gonna mix in some, it's called blooming, where I'm gonna bloom some red pepper flakes in the butter, add in some parm, add in some of that pasta water that Sarah mentioned and then the shallots and garlic. And, and cashew then, cream. Yeah. This is just- Extra creaminess. Yes. It's um just plain raw cashews. I didn't even soak them. If you have a high powered blender like a Vitamix, you don't really need to. Ooh. Eyes burning. That is powerful. Okay. Okay, as you can hear, this thing is really loud. So yeah. we're gonna put some music or something over this next part. Yeah.
I never thought this moment would come. We're sitting down. I think. So, Sarah's made a Caesar many times. So I'm not surprised at how good it is, but it is really good. Mm -hmm. Chicken Caesar was like my favorite thing to order yeah. at restaurants. Did you, get chicken, vegan. did you get chicken Caesar wraps too? Mm -hmm. Like if you went to like a sandwich place? No. No? Really? No. I didn't go to sandwich places that much growing up. Mm. I think my dad was anti-sandwich. I mean, I never met your dad, but <laughs> I know he was anti-sandwich. You've told me. <laughs> <laughs> we would make like French dip sandwiches, mm. but like deli sandwiches, we really didn't do that often. No, we did in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your go-to deli sandwich? Well, I mean, if you're talking a breakfast sandwich, I would always do sausage, egg, and cheese, salt, pepper, ketchup. Mm -hmm. Lunch, I would always do, I would always want some like chicken cutlet kind of. At some point I have to, on the channel, recreate the iconic sandwich from my hometown on Long Island. It's like chicken cutlet, Monterey Jack cheese, lettuce, tomato on garlic bread. It's just, that's what everyone got. It's that the sounds cutlet. amazing. Yeah. You know what was funny was I, I grew up in California, but when I visited New York this summer, we went to like this pizza place and they had this list of things you could add as toppings and mm. chicken cutlet is just an ingredient. Mm. Is that just everywhere in New York? Um, it's just a standard yeah. ingredient, chicken cutlet. When we say New York, we mean the city and the island. We're generalizing. Mm. But yes, <laughs> chicken cutlet, meatball. Standard fare. Standard fare. Okay, this is good, but I really, really want to try this ravioli. I need to taste the fruits of my labor. Listen, I almost just gave up on the sauce and just tossed it in butter because I'm tired, but I am glad that we made this little cream sauce. And I'd be remiss if I didn't at least once say, ravioli, ravioli, give me the formioli. What is that? Hot damn, that is good. And all you, over my face. You sauce yourself, my lady. Um, it's from Spongebob, mm -hmm. I think. That oh, was yeah. good. The pasta could be rolled out a little thinner. Maybe we'll buy another pasta machine and then get rid of it when we move next time. I love pasta, like plain pasta noodles, so that thickness isn't bothering me. We made gigantic ravioli. <laughs> I, I feel like that's how it is at restaurants. Oh. It's like $18 and there's like three raviolis. And, and they're all the like plate. this big. That's really good. You only get three raviolis, but they're all the size of your head. <laughs> It's really, yeah. It tastes so fancy too. It what tastes like a fancy vegan restaurant. What other kind of ravioli is there? Spinach? Mm -hmm. Pumpkin? I'm sure you could put meat. Like we could just put like impossible meat and like mozzarella. Mm. Stuff it in the ravioli. Pizza ravioli. Pizza ravioli. <laughs> Chicken cutlet ravioli. I told Eric this when we pulled this off the stove. This sauce smells like clam sauce. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> it tastes like it too. This is giving me clam sauce vibes. <laughs> I'm not complaining, I used to love that. Oh my God. I, mean, I was gonna say I'm proud of us, but let's face it. I didn't really do much in this video. You made the sauce. We should do this more often. Mm. I feel like we need to have the, um, we need to start a series of dough pocket things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bao, pierogies, hot pockets, calzones. Dumplings, just like like pot stickers. Homemade gyoza, yeah. Gyoza, thank you. What else is there? <laughs> You're like, babe, they're all dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had chicken and dumplings? You know, I don't think I have. Me neither. No? What cuisine is that? What? American. Is it? I don't know, like country food? Country food. I'm stuffed. We have a bunch of leftover ravioli as well that we didn't cook, so I'm gonna layer it with parchment, I think, and then freeze it. And then whenever we're ready to eat it, we can boil it. Mm. I can't wait to give you your Valentine's Day present. Tell them what your Christmas gift to me was. It is a carbon steel hat. <laughs> it is a carbon steel wok. We had a, an old non-stick wok that was kind of losing its non stick Oh, I thought you were going to say stick -a -tude. So we finally decided to upgrade. I'm going to give you the smaller part of your present. There's two parts. Mm -hmm. Happy early Valentine's Day. What is it? 
it's really nothing crazy. <laughs> candy. <laughs> Listen, like weeks ago, I think someone posted on like Instagram or something that they were, had been gifted like a box of chocolates. You know, like the C's candy or like Russell Stover. Mm. And I was like, oh, I miss that. It's an almond butter sweetheart. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. You're my almond Where butter sweetheart. Where did you sweetheart. get this? A vegan chocolatier. Wow, so fancy. Mm -hmm. This is only the first part though. He really came through. Well, this is just like a little preview. Thank you. You're welcome. We're back with the ambiance. <laughs> Late night to have dessert. <laughs> we're back, we're blind, and we're ready to party. Yeah, Eric can't see anything he has. Taking out the contacts. We made, well, I made, Eric observed. Chocolate covered the strawberries. Let's see, we use, my favorite chocolate chips are either the semi-sweet ones from Trader, Trader Joe's, Joe's, or if I'm not going to Trader Joe's, I'll pick up the- Guitard. Guitard semi-sweet chocolate chips. Those are vegan. And then for the white chocolate chips, we have this, um, I had to order this online because I can't find any vegan friendly white chocolate anywhere near me. It's the King David's brand. But I think Nestle actually makes like an allergen friendly or allergen free uh, white chocolate now. So, really? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. The times they are changing. <laughs> what are you gonna have? Um, which one do you think I want? This one. Mm -mm. Which one? Again. This one. No, but if you guess wrong at their time, you're not this my Valentine. One. It's this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making these. Thanks for making everything. Ooh. Okay, it's been a long video. Thanks so much for joining us, especially if you made it all the way to the end. <laughs> like we did somehow. Yeah, I'm very tired. I'm probably gonna eat some more strawberries and pass out. That sounds good. Thanks, bye guys. Bye.